All right, Dr. Evan Miyakawa. We got to know him uh, last year when he started putting up a lot of stats, analytics, and, and just numbers. Numbers that show things, prove things, uh, maybe explain things. And Evan Miyakawa, Dr. Evan Miyakawa, Baylor University, joins us on Sikkim 365 and 365 Sports on YouTube. What was that when you, you found out that you had uh, defended your dissertation? What I mean, I can't even imagine that level of excitement. It was certainly a great feeling, a culmination of a lot of years of work. Um, and I, I really think it's hard to, to put that into, to, to see that happen until it, it really realizes itself right in front of you. So I was really thankful that I was able to finish that on Friday, that I got the old pass from my uh, dissertation committee and uh, ready to just move on and, and uh, be, be finally done with all the years I put into to schooling. So let me ask you this. When you told them you were a part of this show in a major segment during basketball season, how much did that help as well? Didn't help one oh, lick, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they did have to give a disclaimer at the beginning of my dissertation that it actually was not about basketball. So at least uh, oh. they recognized it in some form. But, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I love the, the new look of the site, uh, Evan, by the way, some of the stuff that you've got up there now. Uh, one of the things I think people would find interesting about Baylor, your second-ranked overall team, and they have the sixth-ranked overall player who would be Matthew Meyer, but they do not have one of the top ten five-man lineups, which is pretty interesting. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, correct. I do think there's a lot of noise when it comes to top five-man lineups, uh, partly due to the fact that you know each individual lineup, there just can be – a lot of randomness to that. So, you know, the top 10 lineups or top lineups aren't necessarily representative of, you know, the top 10 teams in the country. I do think for Baylor, though, it speaks to their consistency that they don't have one particular lineup that really outshines all the rest. I think last year we saw a little bit more ups and downs, like the, uh, the five lineup, as it were, with Mark Vidal at the five was by far their most efficient lineup at times last year. And I think they're just a little bit more consistency across the board. And that really speaks to Baylor's depth uh, and the fact that they have, you know, eight guys and now Dale Bonner's in that mix as well who can all really contribute. All right. So, Evan, as you know, last night they, they were – it was an uphill climb. After they had built a pretty nice lead and they start missing free throws and they're down and it doesn't look good. But there's two players on this team uh, – James Akinjo and Matthew Meyer that can make you either, if you're a fan of Baylor, can make you want to, like, go punch yourself, slam your head in the door, and or celebrate. Which of those two has more value in your opinion? And is Jeremy Sohan actually in that conversation based on your, on your numbers as well? I think all of those pieces are really important, but I will start with Matthew Meyer. Um, a lot of attention is paid to you know, his offensive effort. And I think there were a lot of people, including myself, who were expecting him to be Baylor's leading scorer this year. And he was really offensively efficient last year. And that's been slightly disappointing, but it's his defensive impact that actually puts him in the top 10 most impactful players in the nation, according to my metric. He offensively, you know, his numbers are a little bit down, but Baylor has still been really good offensively when he's on the court. He's a hard worker, but defensively, he has been awesome. He's fifth in the country in defensive rating per my metrics, and he is the best on the team in terms of how well Baylor plays defensively when he's on the floor. And in fact, his defensive rating is better than any Baylor player last year, which is really surprising given some of those really high-quality defenders they had. But Matthew Meyer's defensive impact has been off the charts this year, so I think that's an underrated aspect of his game and part of why at least according to the numbers, he's been their most impactful player so far this year. Evan, you got the Big 12 as uh, your top-rated conference, followed by a good little drop-off in the Big 10 and then the SEC. Uh, SEC took home the, the Big 12 challenge. I know this just doesn't translate exactly, but uh, did that surprise you at all? I mean, just the strength of the SEC and what they showed this past weekend against the Big 12? I mean, I certainly would have given the edge to the Big 12, but I do think it wasn't super surprising. This has been a great year for the SEC so far, and I think especially for several of their really top tier teams. Certainly, you know, Kentucky and Auburn are leading that pack. But as we've also seen with Alabama and their win over Baylor, Alabama has the ability to play up to their competition. So in their big games, they've really showed out. And I, so it's not really a huge surprise that they performed as well as they did. Certainly it's disappointing from a Baylor perspective. 
But no, it wasn't a complete shock that the SEC did better in that challenge. You know, it wasn't like they swept the Big 12 or anything. Right. I think if they played those matches again, maybe swept the home court, you might see the Big 12 do better next time. But yeah, it wasn't a huge surprise. Well, yeah, because you're talking about two of the highlighted games were Kansas at home and losing to Kentucky, Baylor on the road at Alabama. If they play that game at home, who knows what happens. And, and then, you know, I think Texas Tech beats Mississippi State no matter where they play that game, among some of the others as well. So that was some. Now, in the end, Baylor last year with that great run, and you know, you saw where they were at 15 or no, Evan. Everyone was starting to say, hey, they're as good or maybe better. And I thought that was a little bit silly, and I think everyone got caught up in that. They're having some attrition with injuries. Is this team, based on your numbers, based on how you calculate, as good top to bottom as they were last year? I think the clear answer to that, to that is no. I think the Baylor team that we saw last year uh, was both from an eye perspective and analytically one of the best teams we've ever seen. And I think they would have evaluated even better in terms of the numbers if they haven't had their struggles with that COVID pause. That really affected probably the first five to six games after that pause. But based on their performance before that and certainly in the tournament, I mean, they were absolutely incredible. Now, this Baylor team this year, you know, I don't think they're as good, especially in terms of their ceiling. But I think the thing that's really struck me with this team, especially early on in the season, and I think this will come back towards the end of the season, is their control. They're just so consistent. I think they have arguably one of the highest floors of any team in the field right now in terms of their, when they aren't playing very well, they can still grit it out and uh, get results. So in terms of that, I still think they're definitely one of those top teams that's aiming for a national title. They're second right now uh, in my team ratings, which is probably slightly higher than they are in some places. But I think part of that's because it's really easy for people to overreact and have recency bias. But when you put Baylor's you know, work together up to this point in the season, they are still one of the best teams in the country, and I have them rated right behind Gonzaga at number two. Uh with Gonzaga, I mean they've got they've got another great team again that's 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 you know going to be there at the end of the year. But how do you compare that team to last year? I mean you don't lose you know Kispert and Jalen Green and just be the same. Much like Baylor doesn't lose the guys that they they lost and, and and turn around and be the same. Yeah, I think it's a very similar story. Gonzaga is still very good this year, but not as good as last year. And again, I don't think that's a knock on them at all. I think we saw two historically great teams that were by far in a tier of their own last year. Baylor was the best team. Gonzaga was by far the second best team. And then there was a clear drop. And so I think this year's Gonzaga team still is really, really good and definitely capable of winning a national title. I just think the gap between, you know, them, Baylor, and the rest of the field is a lot closer than it was last year. But, you know, makes for an entertaining March Madness. I still do think that they are right now the favorite to win, uh, certainly in terms of what they have on their team and their performances so far this year. They certainly haven't taken a big drop from last year, and with some of the freshmen uh, that they brought in and a transfer or two, they're still in a good spot for sure. So, Evan, uh, on your bubble teams, you've got West Virginia right now as uh, one of the top bubble teams, and, and obviously that was a tough loss for them last night. That made, what, six games in a row they've now lost, uh, Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers. Uh, how much more room can they afford here? How, how dicey is it going to get depending on how they close this stretch run? I do think one of the things that's in West Virginia's favor compared to several of the other bubble teams, such as, say, you know, SMU or Notre Dame or Wyoming, those are the other teams that are in that last four in right now, is that their level of competition they're playing is so high. I mean, there are no bad teams in the Big 12. You know, I think the lowest team is still a top 70 team, at least recently. So if they take a loss or two or three, it's, it's still not really going to look that bad on their resume because you're expected to take losses. Whereas for some of these other teams that are in weaker conferences, even the ACC this year, you know, some losses look very bad that can really make your resume metrics plummet. So I think West Virginia is certainly not comfortable by any stretch of the means. But, you know, given the way that Bob Huggins coaches this team and the way that they often play well down the stretch, you know, again, they're going to have to get results, but I think they're, they're, they don't have a lot to be worried about if they take care of their business. Evan, okay, uh, changing and throwing all these numbers into a big, huge wheel and spitting it out like a lottery, what are the chances, what are the odds that some fan gets ejected in Lubbock tonight during the Texas Tech and Texas game? <laughs> I feel like I would probably bet money on that happening <laughs> if I had to pick one or direction or the other. I mean, seeing some of the videos for – their reception of Coach Beard on campus. It's pretty crazy. 
I really hope it doesn't come to that. You know, I hope it's an electric game that there's not anything nasty, but, you know, wouldn't put it past them just given the circumstances. If they get off to a poor start, get a couple of calls against them. I'm telling you, it's happening. You know, it, it's going to it's gonna happen. Evan, seriously, this is amazing for you. Dr. Evan Miyakawa, I know Dr. Jane Harville, who watches and listens to us, has been listening to us for a long, long time. Baylor professor um, uh, has been a part of this as well. That class, and, and what is it like to get through that? And not just when you got the word, but just to kind of the grind of that. Yeah, I really do think, you know, for me, it's been almost five years now in the Baylor graduate program, starting from undergrad and getting my master's and now my PhD. And it's just been really a wonderful experience. The The statistics program in particular, I think a lot of it really has to do with how wonderful the, the professors are. Um, everyone really wants you to succeed when they accept you into that program. They know you have what it takes and they're going to really do whatever it takes to get you there. So I just had a lot of support this whole way, and certainly it was challenging, and they pushed me, and I've grown a lot as a person, but have just always felt very optimistic and positive, and here we are, you know, so I'm just really thankful for the whole experience. Congratulations, man. Seriously, we, we started having you on last year. It was a lot of fun. I know you couldn't do anything until you got that done. I can understand why. What a big moment for you. Dr. Evan Miyakawa. Evan, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. That's so good, huh? He's I was wait excited till, about a Bachelor of Arts from Stephen F. Austin. He's got to wait till May, though. Like, I he's know, done. Yeah, here, February no, 1st, he's that's, done. That's amazing. He's got to wait till May to get the thing that's that he can hang on the wall. His uh, most valuable players, based on his uh, chart, drew Timmy at one. And a pretty big gap of four, point four, uh, four points higher than Kofi Cockburn. We know that Coburn. the beat. What did I say? Co you said Cockburn. It's Coburn. Coburn, okay. Uh, Chet Holman, Gonzaga. Too. At three, he's the freshman, right? Mm -hmm. Oscar Shebaway, Kentucky at four. Anton Watson at Gonzaga. Three of the top five, Gonzaga. Then Matthew Meyer. Marcus Sasser from Houston is at number eight. And you go down the list. Uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. Colin Gillespie, the guard at Villanova, 14. At 22, Obagi. I was going to say, where is he at? 22. And uh, the number that kind of is lower than most is his uh, defensive production. And uh, and then Jeremy Sohan right behind Ochai uh, Obaji from Kansas at 23. Well, he's got Obaji as top 10 MVPs. Yeah, um, he does. Yeah, uh, Grayson Murphy of Belmont, his MVP, Timmy at Gonzaga, Shibue, uh Coburn, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good information. Uh, EvanMaya.com is where you can go check out all of his uh, – Stats and graphs. He's got fastest teams ranked. He's got MVP ranks. He's got game predictions and all sorts of other stuff. I don't know how he found the time with all the schoolwork, but uh, that's why he's got a doctorate. And I'm sitting here co-hosting this radio show. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much the bottom you could line. Could not put all of our degrees together at once, and mine includes an associate of arts, by the way, Paul, that helps prop it up a little bit at Tyler Junior College. It wouldn't get close to anywhere Look, where. Here's Evan the thing. Is. Uh, uh, Evan never never tried the gauntlet that was Tyler Junior College. No. I mean, look, he just jumped right into Baylor. You know how many people get into Tyler every year? Not a lot. I mean, that's that's a very true thing. It's not a very big school, but kids can't get exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right.